Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part four of my Load Multiple Images series. If you haven't watched parts one through three yet, what are you doing here? Go watch those first and then come on back. All right, at the end of part three, we were able to copy the files from the import folder to the save images folder. All right, but we want to make sure that this file copy operation was a success. Now, there's a couple ways you can check, right? You can simply check to see with the dir command if that file is there, but I don't like doing that. It messes up things with the dir. It's, it's just a, little, it's a lot of reasons why. But what we're going to do is we're going to just simply check to make sure that this guy finished without an error. Now, unfortunately, file copy itself doesn't return an error level like a lot of functions do, but you can use basic error handling to check and see if an error was raised in VB. I've got another video about basic error handling. You can go watch this fast tips video. I also cover a lot with error handling in my full developer course. I'll put links down below. But today I'm going to show you the basics of what you need to do. So what we're going to do before that, we're going to say on error, go to copy failed. That means if this guy throws an error, we're going to jump down to a location down here called copy failed. We'll set that up in a second. But also don't forget right after that, turn error handling off on error, go to zero. All right, because if any other errors happen after that, I wanna know what they are. All right, this one I expect may throw an error. So now down here at the bottom, let's copy this, copy field. Down here at the very bottom, I'm gonna put a location called copy failed with a colon. That's a special location you can go to. You can jump to that location, okay? And here we're gonna say status, error copying file and then we'll give them the file name and i like to also give them the error dot description this is the error from vb that will actually literally tell you what the problem is all right out of disk space or something's corrupt or blah 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 whatever okay now if this happens i want to exit the subroutine but I always like to issue a resume and clear the error as well. So we're gonna say resume, uh, do cleanup, we'll call it. And we're gonna make in the location right up here called do cleanup, just like this. And do cleanup will be all the stuff that we have to clean up when we're done. You'll see there's gonna be some other stuff we're gonna add in here. Okay, but on top of that, we're gonna beep. Okay, we're going to error.clear, that'll clear any errors that might be flagged in memory, okay? And then we're gonna exit sub. So normally, if an error is not raised, it's still gonna finish and come through here. It's gonna beep, so we know we're done. Clear any error messages, which there won't be, but that's okay. And then exit the subroutine before it gets to this stuff down here. Okay, that's, that's how basic error handling works in Visual Basic. Is it the best? No, but it works. It'll, it'll get the job done. There are other languages that are a lot cleaner with the way they handle debugging and stuff like this, but this is fine. This is fine. I'm used to it. <laughs> now it's very hard to replicate an error with the file copy and I'm not going to like fill up my hard drive and do some other wacky stuff. So I'm, we're just going to just trust me. This is how you, it works. Trust me. Okay. Okay. If there's an error, you'll get this. Now, after we've copied it and we've made sure that everything is fine, we're going to delete the original file. And we're going to do something very similar to what we just did with the error handling a minute ago. I want to know if this delete operation fails, right? So it's going to look like this on error, go to kill failed or delete failed if you don't like using the word kill. Okay. And this is going to be kill because kill is the command to delete a file. Kill. All right. Import path and file name. So we're going to delete the original file and then turn off error handling on error, go to zero. And guess what? Down here, same thing. In fact, I'm just going to copy this. Copy and paste. And we'll call this kill failed error deleting file. And then the same thing. The rest of it's exactly the same. Error deleting file. And then go to clean up and it'll exit out. Okay? That's your basic error handling right there. Now, when we get done with all of that, and we exit the while loop down here, we're going to tell the user how many files were copied, right? That's just polite to do, okay? So we're going to say, uh, uh, tell user how many files copied or imported, imported, right? 
We're going to say if counter is greater than zero, then status success. Um, and we're going to say um, counter Im images imported, just like that. Otherwise, counter zero, it didn't find any valid files to import. Nothing happened. So status, no images found, right? And if, and then it'll hit our do cleanup. Now, with all of this having been done, we still have not added a record to the contact table to put this guy in the database. We literally just went through and copied the files to the images folder, but we didn't log them in the database, right? So now we're gonna make a record to put this in the contact table. And this is where record sets come in handy. So up top here, we need one more variable, RS as a record set. And at the very beginning, before the while loop, I'm gonna say set RS equals current DB dot open record set contact T. And if you're not familiar with the record sets, go watch the record sets video that I told you to watch before video one. Okay, now at whatever point you want to add the record, you could do it after the delete, you could do it. I like to do it right here after the copy operation, but you could put it really anywhere inside this loop once you know you have a valid file. Okay, I'm gonna put it here. Uh, add to database. And this is, and you could do this with an SQL statement if you really want to. I like using record sets, so that's my personal choice. You could do it, use an import or a, 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 an append query. Um, RS, add new, you'll see how easy this is. Add a new record. RS customer ID equals customer ID. That's the customer ID on the contact form. That's this guy. Where was it? That's this little hidden guy. Okay. And that's part of the contact table. So you know what customer it is. Okay. All right. What field is next? The date. RS contact date equals right now. I believe that's defaulted in the table, but it never hurts to add it and change it manually. Okay. RS description, this is the short text that goes with it. I'm just gonna put in here image. You can put it whenever you want, right? That goes in the text field. And then here's the biggie. RS my image equals new file name, okay? This new file name we just created that we're, you know, we copied it to the images folder. That's what we wanna put in there, okay? RS update saves the record. And now when you're all done with your loop, we gotta remember to close the record set and that also is gonna go in this do cleanup section. So even if we have an error, it's gonna come back up here and close the record set, RS close, whether it's successful or not. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to reorder the contact list and requery it. Because if you look at this thing, Right when it opens up, it's uh, it's in no particular order. I think this is sorted uh, in in straight chronological order ascending. I want this to be in uh, chronological order descending with the new stuff at the top. Okay, and just because the user can come in here and change and filter stuff, I'm gonna force the order by in here. So we're gonna say uh, we're gonna say me dot order by equals contact date descending. So it's gonna sort in reverse order. So the new stuff's up at the top. We gotta to make sure order by is on. So me dot order by on equals true. So make sure you're sorting, right? And then me dot requery. So requery the list. So everything is fresh and updated. And that should do it. There is your code right there. And that's the, that's all, it's not terribly difficult. This isn't like rocket science, right? But you just gotta just you know walk through it step by step. And it's examples like this that will make you a better programmer if you do it yourself. All right, so let's give it a try. Here we go, ready? And import. Boom, there we go. There's all the images. See? There's McCoy, there's Kirk, there's Mr. Data making it so. <laughs> Same, and they're all added in here. And now if this was your product database, now you could use all these images and make your product catalog or your gift cards or whatever you wanna use these images for. And let's go open the import folder. And they're all gone from the import folder. That readme.txt was left alone because it's not a valid image. Go back to here, go to the images folder, and there they all are.
All right, want to import something from someone else? Well, let's close this. Let's close this. Let's go to save changes. Yes, of course. Let's go to somebody else. Let's go to uh, Malcolm Reynolds and go to his contacts. Let me move this back over here where it belongs. I tend to center stuff when I'm, uh, when I'm working on it. So I got a bunch of, of images I want to import for Malcolm. I'm going to hit open the import folder. I'm going to drop those images in here from wherever you got them stored now. I'm going to de delete that readme.txt first. There we go. Let me go grab my Malcolm images, click and drag, drop them there. There we go. Now they're in the import folder. Now I can close this, come back here, hit import. Boom. There they are. They're in the database. They're copied to the images folder. Let's check. Images. And where are they? There they are. Okay. It's a beautiful thing. Now, I happened to mention in the beginning of video one that there is a way to use the standard Windows dialog pick file thingy to hit your import photos and then browse to wherever your photos are. Let's say here, right? And then pick these, click, and then hold down the control key, click, 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 and then hit OK. And then that would handle it without having to go through using that import folder. And I will cover that in the extended cut for the members, just like we did the browse button in the images folder, the original one way, way back in the images video. Uh, we'll do the same thing today. We're going to, for the members, we're going to do multiple files with the file dialog. You can specify the file types and all that before you even browse. When it opens it up, it'll only show you JPEGs and bitmaps and whatever else you want. A lot more advanced and it doesn't require a custom import folder. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Not just this one, all of them. There's hundreds of them by now. Gold members can download these databases that I make in the tech help videos and you get access to my code vault and everybody gets free classes and a whole bunch more. So what are you waiting for? Join today. But that's going to do it. That's going to be your tech help video for today. That's the end of this series for now. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. 
And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.